welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So there have been tons upon tons upon millions upon billions of Nerf Blasters that have come out over the years. There are actually so many that I don't even know where to start and where to end. There is so much stuff to talk about, and it's easy to forget how big foam flinging actually is. Just how big Nerf is. You guys gotta remember, about 90% of this stuff around me is Nerf branded. This stuff. None of the other stuff, like the stuff from Zuru, the stuff from Busby, the stuff from Dart Zone. I mean, there's a Dart Zone thing right there, but there's not that much of it. And that's not even counting like 3D printed stuff, worker blasters, shell ejecting nonsense. Folk flinging is wild and it goes in every direction. And it's easy to forget how fun it is when you get screwed over with tons upon tons upon tons of stupid nuggets like whatever this is. Yeah, but among all of these, there's one that you can immediately recognize. One that is so iconic, so good, so well known, so easily moddable, so highly appreciated and praised from the moment that it was released all the way up until now, over 12 years of praising this thing has gotten, one blaster. And you can see it right now. It's been hidden in plain sight. I've rearranged my wall, mostly. I need a couple more pegs to put the last couple blasters up. But for the most part, yes, I have rearranged my wall. And there is a blaster on this wall that you guys probably know about. Right there. This is the Strife. And this blaster was gifted to me for free by my good friend, Phase one fall. Okay, he asked me not to put his name in this video, but no, I'm gonna put your name in the video because I want to. I know you're probably screaming at the camera right now because I just did that, but you know what? I need to talk to you guys about something, and this is kind of important. I've wanted to bring this up for a while, but just really quickly, if you guys email Phase One Foam and you go into his comment section and you comment mean things to him about him being part of my content and stealing my content and using me as a scapegoat to get more subscribers, stop, because he is my best friend. It has never been about the subscribers. It has never been about the views. It has never been about money, especially because he sends me more things than I can reasonably send him. It has been about nothing like that. It has only and always will only be about Two bros making videos together because it's fun to make videos together. And to anybody watching this video who thinks it's funny to go and send him death threats and emails and stuff that are just super mean and super degrading, get out. You are not part of my community at all. I want you to immediately unsubscribe to this channel and I want you to get as far away from me as possible because I don't like you. With all that said, let's review the Strife. Oh man, what a blaster this is. The Strife is an unforgettable blaster, mainly because as soon as this thing came out, it completely blew up the Nerf community. The entire Nerf community went from a semi cromulent amount of people who were putting blasters together and doing integration to an absurdly high hobby, and most of it was based around modding this thing. Seriously, if you've ever heard the term AR-15 of Nerf, they're talking about the Strife because this is a blaster that you can literally do everything with. And I already reviewed this blaster several months ago with one very tiny detail that I was in the worst mood you could possibly be in. I literally, nothing was going right for me that day and I was extremely mad, just extremely sad, just not in a good mindset at all, and thus created a horribly negatively biased review on the Strife and you guys let me know how bad that video actually was. So we're doing it again, and this time I'm in a happier mood, so I can be a lot more objective about this blaster. 
Let's start with the design. Without a doubt, this is the most instantly recognizable Nerf Blaster right up there next to the strong arm, which is funny because it's like the same size as the strong arm, but goodness gracious, does the strife look amazing from both sides? What the heck? Yeah, this was one of the earlier Elite Blasters where they painted both sides. And I gotta say, the Elite Blue on this blaster, oh, oh it's how it's meant to be. It looks so Oh, good. Everything here looks freaking good. The Elite logo on the grip, the Elite logo on the battery tray, the big white stripe, the black like shield thing that says Strife on it, the Nerf logo, the orange top of it, the dark blue with the black and gray, like gray and black style on the grip, the white stripe, and the orange accents are perfect. This is one of the coolest, most beautiful, most elegant looking, simplistic little blasters ever created, with one tiny caveat that will drive anyone with OCD nuts, symmetry. Yeah, it's not symmetrical. It never has been, it never will be. And this used to drive me up a wall before, and I know to a lot of people, it still will drive you up a wall, but compared to other options out there, yeah, it not being symmetrical is totally fine. Let's talk about the grip. This blaster just has a main grip, but it's covered in rail attachments and attachment points, so you can put whatever stocks and barrels and foregrips and stuff you could possibly want on it. I just failed to flip it. But the main grip, yeah, this was, I think, the first blaster that actually did this style right next to the hail fire. Oh, it's freaking good. It's a little bit too big for this blaster. I will argue this until the day I die. I think that the grip on the Strife is a little bit too big for the blaster's proportions when you use it as a pistol. This does not apply as soon as you do this. Yep, now the grip's just fine because it feels like a primary and a big comfy grip like this is something good that you would wanna have on your primary. But at the same time, when it's a pistol like this, Having a bigger grip isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I would argue that this is still one of the best grips ever designed by Hasbro, and it fits this blaster very well. Could it be better? Yeah, it could be a lot better, but it's really good right out of the box. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a semi-automatic magazine-fed blaster. So you take a mag, you shove it in, you rev, and then it's semi-automatic. And it has a pretty good rev up time. The locks in this blaster are unforgivably annoying, but I will get into that in good time. First, we got to talk about the triggers. The Strife's got three of them, a standard trigger, a rev trigger, and a mag release. The rev trigger, oh, 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 it's so good. Oh, it's clicky. Like it just goes, and it just clicks right in. Just, it's so good. It just, oh, oh. As for the mag release, and on that note, the mag insertion and release, putting the mag in is pretty smooth, though it could be a little bit better right out of the box. And as for the mag release, it's not the best I've ever seen. It is a pretty well-designed mag release. You can hit it with your thumb or by extending your middle finger and then just pulling down, but it is very, very smushy. And that mainly just comes down to because there's like a linkage there, like a lever arm linkage, so it's not gonna be as crisp as a rev trigger, but it's not the best. I think it could be quite a bit better. As for the main trigger, oh, it's so good. This was right out of the box, known for being one of Hasbro's smoothest main triggers ever. It still is one of their smoothest triggers by far, and it is very hard to beat the Strife trigger. There are very few blasters that I can think of that have a trigger that is so good that it successfully one-ups the Strife. For example, the Hail Fire, the Double Punch, and in some cases, the Moto Blitz, but most of the time, I would honestly take a Strife trigger over the Moto Blitz's trigger. This is one of the best triggers ever, and it is near impossible to top this. The firing demo. I think this channel deserves, if it'll, if it'll please just recognize that the uh, mag is in it. There we go. Already? There we go. There we go.
There we go. Oh my gosh. There we go. Oh my gosh. This this is unforgivable. Okay. right there is like the most popular blaster ever made right next to the retaliator and the long shot right here it's simple the strife upon first releasing came equipped with a set of the world's most irritating locks the most irritating locks you guys have ever seen in the history of history they are so bad and so annoying that you can do everything as intended and the blaster will just say no. Just because it feels like it. There's no actual rhyme or reason to it. It just says no. And I'm gonna be honest, the Gen 1 Strife right here was actually kind of not very well received. Right out of the gate, it was received like, what the heck is this? It doesn't work. So Hasbro was pretty quick to get rid of a chunk of these locks. Mainly this thing right in there do you see that little orange tab? This, right there. That is a lock that I kid you not determines whether or not a dart is in the magazine and thus determines whether or not you can pull the trigger, very similarly to a Vortex Blaster. But unlike the Vortex Blasters, which actually had that style of lock figured out, this one didn't. And stuck! This thing sucks! But here's the thing. I want you guys to come see exactly how easy it is to take the locks out of this blaster. Because to a lot of people, nerf modding, lock, lock removal, ugh. What do you gotta do? Do you have to figure out what the locks are? Allow me to demonstrate. Let's go to the office. The lock has been rotated and pressed so that the button is permanently pushed down. And we just rotate that around, bending the wires up to go over where they originally were. And because this blue wire doesn't have much slack, I just put it next to the little grid that it's supposed to have to hold itself on. The blaster's modded now. I can rev it up whenever I want. I can pull the trigger as much as I want. It's smoother because I lubricated it. Nothing to complain about anymore. And yep, there you have it. I just solved every single problem that I actually had with this blaster in less than five minutes. No soldering required, no clipping anything, no shell cutting, no pliers, nothing a screwdriver, and about five minutes. And now, I've got no complaints with this blaster. You can rev it whenever you want, pull the trigger as much as you want, no dart lock, you can even rev it with the jam door open. This is such a fantastic blaster, such an obvious blaster, and such a simple blaster, that even an absolute troglodyte-minded noob like me can take this blaster and completely overhaul it without too much trouble. Yeah, Tezzerak gave me crap to build, but not nearly as much as modding some other blasters, like trying to mod the freaking Infinis, for example, or God forbid, trying to mod a Nitron. The Strife, anybody can mod it, and anybody can mod it without too much trouble. This thing's fantastic. And even in its stock configuration, like, yes, the locks are annoying, but I just showed you how to remove the locks. And in the state that it's at right now, this is one of the best blasters in history. 
there is a reason that it is so widely known that Hasbro themselves made a sequel to it. This is the Strife sequel, the Strife X. It takes a lipo, it shoots 150 FPS, it takes short darts. It is the mod that people have been doing with this one for over 10 years now, and you can buy it off store shelves. You can flip it, just like the original Strife. I'm dual wielding flipping Stripes right now. This is badass. If there is one blaster that I could give the absolute highest recommendation possible that everyone everywhere in the world, whether you're into professional foam flinging or just a casual list should pick up, this is the blaster. This thing is next to perfection. It's about as close as to perfection as you will ever, ever, ever get. If you want to buy one, I'll link it in the description below. It'll be the modulus one because you can't get the elite blue one anymore, even though this is the best colors game. But thanks for watching. Bye.